Well, what we have there, everybody, yes, indeed, is a sacred ibis. And lots of martins flying around. I think they're just emerging from their mud nests. The sacred ibis is what we call a probing beak. You can see it probing into the mud there, pulling out whims. Delicious worms for breakfast. Mmm. Very nice. Sedges, purple pan weeds, and that sort of thing. Liz, you say have we got to explore any of the insects and things in the Mara. Liz, I must confess that my tree insect and just general small stuff knowledge of this place is very poor. And that is because we just don't spend any time on foot here. We can't. We're obviously not allowed to. I've ordered a whole lot of literature. Ooh, hang on a second. Quickly to Main North Crossing if we can. It looks like there's going to be a crossing. Unfortunately, it's going to be at Main South where we do not have a camera, which is deeply irritating. Anyway, there, if you look up at the top, just behind that vehicle, which of course is a game drive vehicle on holiday, there are a whole lot a game drive vehicle on holiday. Game drive vehicle full of people on holiday. There and another one. And they're all heading down towards a crossing point over here where I think those wildebeest are coming down. Now that is very exciting. It's very early in the morning, but there is a crocodile there waiting. Two crocodiles, three crocodiles you can see there waiting. We'll just keep an eye on that picture there. And a huge, huge pod of hippo just watching to see developments. Mm, this is very interesting. Philip, you say our hippo is part of the crocodile diet. No, Philip, almost never. Certainly a very large crocodile could be a threat to a very small hippo, but it happens very seldom indeed because the big hippo, of course, are more than twice the size of even the heaviest crocodile. So a big hippo weighs two and a half tons, 2,500 kilograms, pushing 3,000, at least pushing 6,000 pounds. Whereas the biggest crocodile, I think on record, is about 1,600 pounds, maybe a bit bigger than that. Now, I very frustrated because we have a camera exactly opposite. You see those rocks there? There is a camera opposite that, but it has got some small glitch involved in its operation, which we will endeavor to fix today. But that is where I think that these wildebeest are thinking about coming down. Can you see them? Just long line of them over there. Excuse the slightly jerky movement of the camera. Now, a tool while we watch what can only be described as a rally move to get into position there. Uh, you want to know if the hippo ever get involved in the crossing. Yes, they do seem to. I've seen them. We were also, Steph and I were reading a little paper. Well, he was reading it to me. It was quite nice, actually, while I was doing bits and pieces. He was reading fascinating information about how hippo definitely take part in feeding on carcasses of various kinds. Uh, possibly not, probably not killing animals that try and cross the water, but they do feed on meat quite frequently. We've definitely seen them chase crocodiles. We've seen them get in amongst the migration. What they're doing in amongst it, I'm really not sure. But there is definitely a level of involvement. I think, I mean, I keep saying this, but I think they must find this migration time quite trying. Maybe it's exciting. You know, I, I liken it while we wait for these hip hippo, for the wildebeest to perhaps come down. I liken it a little bit to my parents who live in a very sleepy seaside town. And while they love the peace of the year most of the time, they enjoy the six weeks of holiday fever that takes the place in December. And I think the hippo are probably quite similar. They enjoy the peace of the year normally, but the six weeks of migration mayhem that happen in this area probably quite exciting all righty let's head across to brent maybe he is heading towards maine south and he'll get a view of that big herd coming down to the water